Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles where today we are joining Bailethwin in this Tier 10 ranked battle on the fault line map in the British Tier 10 battle cruiser HMS Incomparable. Now on paper Bailethwin's team do have a bit of an advantage over the enemy team because they have two radar cruisers and the enemy team only have one. Bailethwin's team have a Des Moines and a Salem which is kind of like the Walmart version of the Des Moines. Um, it's got a very good heel, but its radar's kind of crap. Teammate, the enemy team only have one radar cruiser, and it's a Salem. However, there aren't any destroyers in play. This is three battleships, although a lot of these battleships, like the Incomparable itself here, is actually a battle cruiser. Um, and three cruisers, so there are no destroyers. So having radar in this kind of situation is good, it's better to have it than not have it. But with no destroyers to flush out of smoke screens or detecting cap circles, the, the presence of two radar on Bailethon's team isn't exactly going to be a game changer. I mean, the enemy team do have a Napoli. I'm pretty sure the Napoli gets a high speed smoke, so possibly the radar could be useful there. But with most of, well, all of the teams consisting of large heavy cruisers, and battleships, um, radar is definitely not going to be a game changer, not in this battle. Oh, I've just noticed. So, there was a recent update for World of Warships, and Wargaming have messed around with the settings again, haven't they? I don't have thick health bars or ships' names or anything like that on by default. I mean, you can, you can fix that just by holding down the Alt key, but um, it's kind of annoying. Speaking of kind of annoying, HMS Incomparable. Is that how you say it? I mean, honestly, I don't know. It's my language, I should know, but it's not exactly a word that's in common use. I've just been going through life calling it HMS Incomparable. It could be HMS Incomparable. I don't know. There we go. I'm, I'm actually holding down the Alt key for the rest of this battle so you can see what ships are getting shot at. But yeah, yeah, Incomparable or Incomparable, whatever it is, I think it's one of those words that nobody really knows how to pronounce because nobody uses it, and it's not until, well somebody puts a ship by that name into a game that people are forced to say the word out loud when they'd probably really rather not have to. Now, if you're not a native English speaker, that's fine. You've got a perfectly good excuse. But I am a native English speaker. <laughs> I think... I mean, I just call it incomparable. I think many, many years ago, I used to call it incomparable. I mean, long before it was put into World of Warships. And I can't even remember the circumstances of the conversation, but again, many years ago, I heard somebody calling it incomparable. And I thought, oh, that was a narrow escape. I'm really glad I didn't say incomparable. <laughs> or I'd have looked like a right idiot. <laughs> and it's been incomparable for me ever since. And I suspect that's probably the situation that most people have when they look at the name of this ship and they just think, oh, I hope I don't have to say that. <laughs> I wouldn't want to say it wrong and look like an idiot, so they just wait for somebody else to say it, to take the risk. And, uh, and then that's how it's pronounced from that moment forth. So incomparable, incomparable, honestly, I have absolutely no idea. I realise I am a native English speaker and that's not much help to most of you, but that's just the way it is. Anyway, so the ship itself, very definitely a battle cruiser, but with... 20 inch guns. I mean, the hopelessly unrealistic design was never going to get built. And you know what happens when there's a ship that was never realistically ever going to get built? That means Wargaming get to make shit up. And oh boy, they've made plenty of shit up where this ship's concerned. Starting with those 508mm guns. Um, there is absolutely no way British shipbuilding industry was ever going to be able to make 508mm guns. These are 20 inch gun barrels. We struggle to make 16 and 18 inch. There is no way we're going to make 20 inch. But hey, as long as we're making shit up, there it is. Also, because it's a battle cruiser, despite the comically large size of this thing, I mean, if built according to specification, it would have been the biggest ship in the Royal Navy. And yet, you can get the stealth on this thing down to 109 kilometers. And again, because it's a battle cruiser, it's fast. It has a top speed of 33 knots. Although it has a huge turning circle because it's so massively long. But it also comes with um, some fairly respectable utility as well. It has an engine booster. <laughs> That's engine right. Boost a battle cruiser with a speed of 33 knots that also has an engine boost. And it has hydro. And it has torpedoes. 
I mean, you know, as long as we're just making shit up, Wargame. And yet Wargame will quite rightly point out that this was the design specification for this ship. But nobody ever realistically thought they were ever going to build it, so they could just put whatever they wanted on the design. Um, and Wargaming has too. So, yeah. Meanwhile, Bailethwin's team are down uh, quite a bit, actually. The enemy team are 200 points ahead. Bailethwin's team have lost the Hindenburg quite early on. They've just lost the Des Moines, and the Schlieffen has just run out of cruiser support and is not looking very happy, uh, facing down three enemy ships by himself. However, Bailethwin has spent all this time getting into position to do this. Hello, Yoshino. Here's this 508mm special delivery you ordered. Oof. <laughs> Frankly, I'm surprised the Yoshino survived. He definitely wasn't expecting that. I mean, he probably should have been because Bailethwin just shot down his spot aircraft, but eh. Well, his gun's certainly on point in this way, but he does have torpedoes. Then again, the incomparable has a mind drone. Still wouldn't have expected the torpedoes to be capable of missing from that range, but they kind of did. And there goes the Yoshino, just in time to introduce the Yamato to the torpedo tubes on the starboard side. Now, he does take a spanking there because... It's a Yamato, but with his shitty battlecruiser armour, I suspect several of those 18-inch gun hits were probably over-penetrations. And yes, good to see he's turning out to get the rear turret firing. I mean, it's only two guns per turret, but under those circumstances, one gun was all it was ever going to take. And then he turned around to deal with the enemy Schlieffen, but uh, the friendly Schlieffen, who's still hanging on grimly over at uh, Cap Circle Charlie, managed to finish him off from the other side of the map. So that's kind of nice. And now the enemy team are behind, although not by much. Oh, look at this. Oh, such. It's like they're all lining up to give broadside to these 508mm guns. Oh, hello. Schlieffen torpedoes. Ah, you know what? Engine boost's running. He's doing 36 knots. This is fine. The friendly Schlieffen over there by Cap Circle Charlie has finally gone down. Honestly, I'm surprised he lasted as long as he did. The enemy Salem and the Napoli over there. Uh, backed up by the Ohio down to the south, with the big guns has been doing a really good job. Over on that side of the map, uh, over on this side, the exact opposite, largely thanks to Bailethwood, has been happening. So now they're closing in. It's a three on three. There's only six points between the two teams, and the chances for the enemy Napoli and Salem are going to depend on how much support they get from the Ohio down there. Who looks like he's trying to duck into cover behind the islands. Oh dear. Oh, that's a shame, isn't it? The Napoli is running his high-speed smoke, and it looks like the Salem, if he knows what's good for him, is also taking advantage of it. But the incomparable, as well as everything else that it has going for it, is very, very sneaky. 10.6 kilometer surface detection range. And unless I'm very much mistaken, the Salem's radar is only 9.6 kilometers. Oh dear. Oh well, the high-speed smoke doesn't last forever. The Salem sees him. He starts turning in, honestly. It's not going to do him any good. <laughs> and there's the Napoli. Yeah, that smoke doesn't last very long, does it? So they've now they've got a Yamato on one side, they've got Bailiff within the Incomparable on the other. You can't angle against both. <laughs> the Salem has gone down, taken out by the Yamato as he tried to angle against Bailiff Uh The Ohio. I don't think he has shots at anybody. There's the high caliber. Bailethwin does still have his hydro running, which is fortunate because the Napoli does have torpedoes, but even more fortunate is the fact that he slowed down to avoid giving broadside to the Ohio, and that's really what's let him avoid the Napoli's torpedoes here. The Napoli's trying to finish off the Salem, which is the smart choice, I suppose, trying to take something with you, but um, yeah. <laughs> you can't really angle against 508mm guns. And that just leaves the Ohio. Uh, Bailethwin abandons the cap circle here, which is fine because the Salem is still in the cap circle. The cap's going to get flipped regardless of what Bailethwin does because with the limited amount of health remaining on the Salem, there is no way he is going to want to even see the Ohio because it will delete him the second it looks at him. Now, the Ohio has some rather large guns as well, and it has better armour than the Incomparable, but when you're talking about guns of this kind of calibre, 457 to 508 millimetre, the amount of armour that you have, it, it doesn't really matter. 
I mean, it kind of does, because if you control somebody into shooting at your angled belt, which is what Bailiff Wind's doing here, then the belt armor will bounce shells of any caliber. But while the Ohio's 18-inch guns can punch through the 25mm bow armor, in fact, yeah, they just did. That 25mm bow and stern plating on the incomparable. It's not armored to battleship standards. The Ohio is, but the incomparable has 508mm guns, which can punch through the bow and stern 32mm plating on the Ohio. Assuming, of course, that the Ohio manages to turn and present the bow and stern plating in the first place, which thus far, he hasn't. He's been letting Bailiff Wind punch through his belt armor at relatively flat angles. The thing is, even when he does turn to angle away, Bailiff Wind can still penetrate his bow and stern. And when you're this close, there's not that much chance that the shots aimed at the bow and stern are going to miss and are going to ricochet off the belt. The other downside of the incomparable is that it does not get a huge amount of health. It starts with 70,000, the Ohio starts with 96,000. And Bailiff Wind started this engagement with 40,000, with the Ohio on 80,000. And now they're on the same amount of health. And of course Bailiff Wind has torpedoes. The Ohio is turning to try to get... Because he does have better firepower. He's got more guns. But he's just sailed out from the other side of the island right into the line of fire of the Yamato. <laughs> In his efforts to try to keep Bailiff Wind at arm's length. So now he's having a turn to get away from the Yamato, which reduces his gun advantage. And Bailethwin, of course, still able to get two-thirds of his firepower pumping shells through that 32mm stern plating. And, of course, torpedoes from the other side. He's going for the gun turret here, which seems smart. Fails to take them out, though, quite surprising. Um, let's face it, there's no way the Ohio's getting away with this. The best he can possibly hope for is to take Bailethwin down with him and then pray for a miracle. Meanwhile, the Salem, who did the best thing under the circumstances, with the fraction of health that he had left, he's flipped the cap circle at Charlie, and now, well, basically all three of them are shooting at this poor old Ohio. There's a torpedo hit, and there's the kill. 257,000 damage and four kills for Bailethwin. In HMS, however the hell you pronounce it. Could have gone the other way. It was three on three. The enemy did have two very strong cruisers who did a great job at the beginning of the battle. But the Ohio chose to run away rather than backing up his two surviving teammates. I mean, you could argue that the Napoli and the Salem should probably have chosen to run and hide as well instead of coming out to fight a Yamato and an incomparable. <laughs> but, uh, well, they did. The Ohio didn't. And, well, you know, sometimes it doesn't really matter whether you're all doing the right thing or the wrong thing. As long as you're all doing the same thing, that can often be enough to guarantee victory. Sadly... That was not the case today. So congratulations, Bailethwin, in HMS, however the hell you pronounce it. 257,000 damage and four kills out of six in a tier 10 ranked battle. Hope you enjoyed it, and as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.